Hey guys, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, ways in which you can learn how to wood carve. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because it is time and time again, um, aside from what wood are you carving or how long have you been carving, the most asked question, and that's how did you learn to carve? Um, to me, this is an important issue because uh, I'm a teacher. And I'm always curious about how people learn. I'm always curious about um, different learning styles. Some people learn best by kinesthetic uh, means. So they like to get their hands dirty. They like to get their hands active. Other people learn best by reading a book or watching a video. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is the way that I learned to carve. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, I was introduced to carving through a step-by-step booklet. This was a book put out by Smoky Mountain Woodcarvers on carving a little boot, a cowboy boot about this big, with just a knife and a V-tool. And also, uh, I think a dog or something else that I'd never ended up carving. So I only used the one project as a springboard. But uh, it laid out each and every step that is necessary to create this boot, you know, how to get the rough form, how to get the details, the wrinkles and the leather, the texture to make it look like a boot. And from that booklet, from making that project, I became absolutely obsessed, completely absorbed in the process of carving. The tactile sensation of moving a razor sharp blade through the wood, I was very lucky and blessed uh, to have a very sharp blade uh, provided by Smoky Mountain Woodcarvers. So of course, starting with that was important. But the main thing is I followed to a T each step in this booklet outlined, and that was my intro. But I soon got bored with that. I didn't want to stick to books, even though I learned a whole lot from other books, such as um, Everett Ellenwood's uh, Woodcarving Illustrated book. I believe it's called, uh, uh, let's see, The Basics of Woodcarving, something like that. Um, that was a hugely instrumental book. I read through that book cover to cover a handful of times, learning about the woods for carving that are best for carving, um, the you know the techniques for carving, step by step projects. I did a few of the step by step projects in that book. Books were important. Ian Norbury's book from Wood Carving Illustrated on uh, sculpting uh, female faces was very important for me, but. Probably the most uh, impactful thing uh, later in my carving journey was um, observing um, other carvers such as Ron Adamson, Ian Norbury in his videos. It was watching people demonstrate, not just step-by-step uh, -step projects, but watching people demonstrate uh, carving faces in wood. And so, you know, Ron Adamson laid out the steps. You know, he said, first I get the overall shape of the face, the egg of the face and then I go in and I create the hollow for the eyes and the bottom of the nose and the cheeks and the mouth. And I learned from watching his videos and carving alongside of him. Granted, very bad carving. Th these carvings I was doing were literally awful. They were terrible carvings. They were. I can't even begin to say how far off I was from the goal of Ron Adamson's work. And in fact, uh, this is not, this is a side note, but I managed to meet Ron Adamson and this is one of his uh, very beautiful pieces. So um, he's an amazing carver and uh, a huge inspiration. So he's probably the main reason that uh, I'm doing what I do today in the style of how I'm carving, right? Cottonwood bark carving faces. He's definitely influenced me in a large way. So watching uh, videos, of course, Early on, absorbing all the books that I could was huge. Um, I had a lot of free time as a kid, so I absorbed as much as I could, um, which is why I think carving tends to be something that either young people do or extremely old people do. So, because you need free time to do it. Um, the next thing for sure uh, was, you know, a combination of trial and error, right? The, the thing that really matters is the application of the knowledge, right? So I'd watch the videos from Ron, Ad Ron Adamson, I'd read the book from Everett Ellenwood or Ian Norbury, um, and then I would apply the knowledge to my projects and I would try, I'd make tons of carvings, right? I'd, I'd probably do a carving every day or so, or, and sometimes probably even more, uh, but it was important to me to try and 
practice what I was learning, right? The application alongside of the acquisition of knowledge is very, very important. So um, this is really the motivation for um, the school. Uh, I started an online wood carving school that is video oriented, um, that uh, helps folks to learn to carve realistic faces. Um, this time, uh, high resolution. These are uh, you know in-depth projects, beginner, intermediate, and advanced projects. Uh, frankly, um, are uh, re uh, you know it's really unbeatable in terms of price. You pay um, you know less than the cost of one of my workshops to get access to um, you know tons of projects, eighty plus project videos, and two new project videos added a month. I'm not trying to turn this into an ad. What I'm saying is. Uh, or maybe I am. <laughs> what I'm saying is that um, the resources, the reason that I spend the time doing the things that I do uh, as a teacher, those are largely connected to attempting to teach in the ways that I found were most helpful to me, right? So visual demonstration, uh, the act of actually making the things that I see in those demonstrations, uh, having multiple angles. I really make a huge point in my videos to get the profile angle because the most revolutionary thing that I learned in carving faces was from seeing a very simple side profile picture drawing of a wood spirit, right? Just seeing how the nose up, uh, came out from the face, the forehead kicked back, um, the, the jaw uh, receded slightly, you know, the planes of the cheek, all of these details came to me when I saw the profile. So I emphasize the profile in the videos. I use all of the things that I needed to see most as a young person. I need, I weave, I wove those into the, the project videos. And uh, now I'm writing a book. And the book is hopefully, uh, a, a, you know, achieving the same thing that those early books uh, sort of achieved for me. And, and hopefully more uh, in that I am trying to take people through the very beginning basics of using a knife to carve a face all the way into um, you know, an advanced relief project where you actually learn how to achieve realistic features, curly hair, flowers, etc. cetera. So um, these are the ways in which um, I'm teaching. These are the ways in which I've learned to carve and I hope that answers all of your questions. And if anyone wants to know, uh, <laughs> now they know. So thanks for listening.